the solution of this problem in the official AMC pamphlet not only makes full sense, but it's also brilliant. To solve this problem, we need to identify all the polynomials whose coefficients and roots meet the conditions given in this problem, then add all five coefficients of each of these polynomials, and then add up all these values. We should be able to find a small subset of possible values of z0 that satisfy the given conditions for our polynomials. Here is the brilliant idea of transforming the given polynomial equation used in the official AMC solution. We multiply both sides of our equation by linear polynomial 1 minus z. At first glance, this operation is paradoxical. We increase the degree of our equation by 1 and add one more root. Well, at least we know what root has been added. It's equal to 1. And 1 is not the root of our original equation, since all the coefficients of our original equation are not negative, and one of them is equal to 4. So we can safely use the new equation instead of the old one. Any root that is not equal to 1 is our root. Let's write the new equation in the standard polynomial form and move the term with the highest degree to the right side. Now the idea of this transformation begins to reveal itself. First we notice that all the coefficients of this polynomial are real non-negative numbers. Now if the magnitude of z0 is 1, then the magnitude of any power of z0 is also 1. So, if we substitute z0 for z in each term in both sides of our equation, all the powers of z0 will have magnitude equal to 1. Now, let's view the terms of this equation after this substitution as complex numbers, so that we have five complex numbers on the left side and one complex number on the right side. The magnitude of their sum is equal to the magnitude of the right side, which is equal to 4, since the magnitude of z power 5 is 1. On the other hand, the sum of the magnitudes of all five terms on the left side is 4 minus a plus a minus b plus b minus c plus c minus d plus d, which is equal to 4, since all letters a, b, c, and d get cancelled in this addition. This is a big discovery. The sum of the magnitudes is equal to the magnitude of the sum of all five terms on the left side of the equation. Now we can apply the triangles inequality, which in regards to complex numbers states that the magnitude of the sum of two or more complex numbers is not greater than the sum of their magnitudes with equality achieved if and only if all these complex numbers lie on the same line as shown in this diagram. Let's make one more observation that is quite trivial but is important for us. Since each power of z0 has magnitude equal to 1, then in case when this power is a positive real number, this number is simply equal to 1. As we have shown earlier, if we assume that the freestanding coefficient d is not 0, then the term on the right side and any non-zero term on the left side are positive real numbers, since they are parallel to d, which is a positive real number. From that we can conclude that the powers of z in all the terms that are not zeros are equal to 1 for any complex number z whose magnitude is equal to 1. We can summarize our results as following. If complex number z0 satisfies one of our polynomial equations and its magnitude is equal to 1, then z0 must be a root of unity of order 2, 3, 4, or 5. 
The easiest way to figure out the roots of unity is by applying the de Marvo formula. Thanks to this magnificent formula, we can obtain all n roots of unity of order n by simply dividing the full circle of 360 degrees into n equal angles. Here is an example of this method for the roots of unity of third order. We divide the circle into three equal angles. When we raise each of the corresponding complex numbers in their polar form into power 3, its angle is multiplied by 3. So each of these three complex numbers, after raising it to power 3, becomes real number 1, because its polar angle is multiple of 360 degrees. This is the entire list of roots of unity of orders 2, 3, 4, and 5. Note that we don't consider the root of unity of order 1, since 1 is not the root of our polynomials. For the same reason, we exclude 1, which is the root of unity of all orders, from these lists. So the roots of unity of second order include only one number whose polar angle is one half of 360 degrees. The roots of unity of third order include numbers with polar angles one third and two third, etc. Also note that there is only one common root of unity of orders two and four with one half of the full circle. This is number minus one. The first case that we want to examine is when coefficient d is greater than zero. In this case, all other complex numbers in this equation, if the coefficients are not zeros, are positive real numbers for any argument z0 whose magnitude is equal to 1. This implies that any root z0 of this equation is one of the four roots of unity of fifth order that is not 1. This forces all the coefficients 4 minus a, a minus b, b minus c, and c minus d to be zeros, since we know that unity of fifth order doesn't have any common roots other than 1 with any unity of order lower than 5. In other words, there is no such complex number z0 other than 1 whose fifth power equals 1 and at the same time its second, third or fourth power also equals 1. Such numbers don't exist. This produces the equation 4 equals 4 z to 5, from which it follows that all four roots of unity of fifth order other than 1 are roots of our original polynomial whose coefficients a, b, c, and d are equal to 4. That gives us the first result. The sum of the coefficients of this polynomial equals 20. Now let's examine the case when coefficient d is 0, but coefficient c is positive, and we can divide both sides of this equation by z. That implies that any root of this equation whose magnitude is 1 is one of the roots of unity of fourth order. Let's first assume that argument z0 is one of the two roots of fourth order that are not common with any other roots of unity of lower order than fourth. This forces all coefficients in the left side of this equation, other than c, to be zeros, which produces one original polynomial with coefficients a, b, and c all equal to four. The other case of roots of unity of fourth order is minus 1, which is the common root of unities of second and fourth orders. This forces coefficients 4 minus a and b minus c in the left side of this equation to be zeros and allows coefficient a minus b to take one of three possible values, 1, 2, or 3. This produces three original polynomials with coefficients shown on the diagram. Note that 
root minus 1 also allows a minus b to take value 0 but that would produce the original polynomial which we have already counted in the previous case the next case is when coefficient c equals 0 and coefficient b is positive that implies that uh, the roots of this equation that have magnitude 1 must be the roots of unity of third order. And uh, unity of third order doesn't have any common roots with any other unity of lower orders. That forces coefficients 4 minus a and a minus b to be zeros and it produces one original polynomial with coefficients a and b both equal to 4. The last case is when coefficient b is equal to 0 and coefficient a is positive. That implies that the only root of unity of second order that is not 1, which is minus 1, forces the coefficient 4 minus a to be 0 and that produces the last original polynomial shown on the diagram. We can finally summarize our results and calculate the totals of coefficients of all seven polynomials that we have identified. The total is equal to 92. The answer is B.